Hey everybody, my name is Joe Barnard. I retired in 2016 after a 33 year Air Force career as a pararescueman and combat rescue officer. I am now the executive director of the Ford School, a residential treatment center for teen boys in Benton, Tennessee. Hi, my name is Megan Barnard and I am the spouse of Joseph Barnard. We've been married for 30 years and I'm proud to say that. My injuries were accumulative over my career. A lot of concussions, two of them were labeled low, low grade TBIs. And I probably noticed in 2013, 2014 is when my irritability and aggression and anger and depressive state uh, started to increase. And that's when I was really, really struggling. To see my husband struggle, it was very difficult for me. I had been married to him when I first noticed it about 23, 24 years. So I had a pretty good understanding of the kind of man that he was, the kind of provider, the kind of father, and the kind of husband. So we had some struggles there um, in 2014, 2015. Yeah. Um, I wasn't doing too well. What was that like for you? What's... It was hard. <laughs> I mean, frankly, yeah. it, it wasn't easy. It was back in 24. What, what was the most concerning thing for you? I started noticing a lot of anger that was uh, not present there before. Yeah. You would have a little bit of anger here and there, but this was like a long, slow burn of anger. Yeah. Um, intolerance, a lot of hypervigilance. Yeah, the irritability. The irritability, like I really had to watch my P's and Q's and how I would approach him with questions or whatever like that. Because yeah. you get mad and then we would have a fight and it yeah. wasn't good for the family dynamic. Yeah. I actually started noticing it a couple years prior to that. It was just a little bit. But then when we moved to his final duty station, I was like, okay, I wasn't wrong then. It's actually ramping up. And so you had a lot of bad dreams. I mean, yeah. you were having some serious, he was having serious night terrors and mm -hmm. um, you weren't sleeping well. You were drinking more. You're watching a lot of the negative news that isn't like you, right? right? We, yeah. we don't really watch the news too much. Yeah. But it was really having an effect and just an overall like malaise. And one thing that really hit home for me in a, in, a, in a job that he was always joyful to go to and he was always proud to serve, I started noticing that he would really pause before he would go to work in the morning and he would start, instead of just putting on his combat boots and his uniform and walking straight out the door excited to like win the day, he started kind of pacing around the house in the morning and he would stall to put on his boots and his, his flight jacket or his, his uniform. And so little things like that started stacking on top of each other. Yeah, I felt, I felt like I was in a funk that I just couldn't get out of, to be honest with you. And I was trying all sorts of stuff and then I started numbing myself. I didn't take any of the prescriptions they tried to give me, which I thought was a good thing. All the side effects were, you know, impotency, which was like, oh my God, I ain't dealing with this crap either. So I thought that was interesting. But um, yeah, the alcohol use was not, I mean, I remember one time being in the gym, trying to work out and all I wanted to do was go to class six and buy a bottle of liquor. Yeah. And I was like, oh man, this is not me. Why? And everybody I looked at, I just wanted to rip their head off. And so... And gosh, it was hard for me to approach that with yeah. you because I remember the few times I did say, hey, bud, you know, you drank a little much tonight or whatever. You'd be like, I'm a grown-ass man. I can yeah. do what I want to. Yeah. And it would start a fight, right? Yeah. So I had to kind of, yeah. you know, go in sideways to kind of approach you about things where I was always able to just speak yeah. my truth yeah. prior to that. It was just the fog. I just felt like I was in a fog. It was really hard to put a pin on what actually the issues were so and you were tired too you were like coming up from work and falling asleep at like five like yeah i wasn't sleeping at night you're right i had i had dead buddies visiting me at night telling me i wasn't good enough and wasn't doing the right things i mean the terrors were just no bueno and you they were went, just no good and you weren't telling me about them yeah yeah it's not like you yeah. were coming out and saying this is what's going on yeah So I was in search to figure out how to help him, right? Because he was so busy and he was active. And frankly, um, it's kind of hard to broach some subjects uh, with your husband when he's not in quite his, his right state of mind. So I did a lot of research. I got on Google 
and I knew enough about hormones and trauma and PTSD that I kind of had a feeling what was going on. So I dove into Google and I started doing some research and medical journals and things like that. And what popped up was the Joe Rogan podcast that had Andrew Marr and Dr. Gordon on it. And I watched that and I couldn't believe the information. And it was almost as if, if I had a, a box to check, I, he checked every single box of your symptoms. Yeah. And um, it was hope. It was hope for me. And then I had to figure out how to tell him. Yeah. I had to figure out how to say, hey, buddy, I think this is what's going on with you. Are you open to the conversation? It was uh, great getting on the routine, the video conference with Doc Gordon and the questionnaires and the labs and how it all works out. It's, it's just amazing. And if you stay on the routine and you, you, know, you got a morning and night ritual of what you're supposed to take and how it interacts with your body and how it heals you, um, it's just, there's a bright, shiny windshield ahead of your life out there um, with rain X on it if, you know, you get on this stuff. It happened pretty quick for us, sort of the noticeable, um, just the positive attitude in life and just feeling better during workouts and just more sociable and less, less, oh, yeah. uh, like you didn't want to do less that. attentive, you know, being out and being out and about. And, but really at your worst, you didn't want to talk to anybody. No. Remember that? No. Yeah, I forgot about that. I had really bad luck with therapists, too. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I believe in therapy. I mean, I'm running a residential treatment center for teen boys. We have amazing clinical staff here. But it's very personable, personal to find, you know, the right therapist and have that relationship and that trust and all that. And I didn't have the best luck with therapists. I had some amazing therapists at the end. Mm -hmm. But as I went through the journey, man, it was brutal trying to find and it's really about the holistic the whole holistic program yeah. right yeah. and so what we weren't aware of that came into you know our awareness through you going to NICO is you had some TBIs yeah. some traumatic brain injuries that we didn't know about yeah and then they did the history on that and then the yeah the test to figure that out yeah yeah so yeah I hit my head a lot <laughs> so, when did you so, <laughs> when did you start to notice when you were on the regimen, the treatment protocol, um, the vitamins, the nutraceuticals, and the hormone replacement, when did you start noticing a difference? Uh, pretty quick, within a month, I would say. Yeah, I think that's about right. Um, and then it just got better after three months and six months, and then really at eight months, I felt like I was back to my old self. I could run big stuff and be in charge of things and make have stressors come at me and yeah. deal with them fine and all that so well, I remember um, him having hope um, I remember you saying to me okay I can't still run through walls but I feel like I almost could again yeah because you yeah. always felt like you could run through walls yeah, and, and it gave him back his his vigor and his zest yeah. for life yeah yeah man I all I do is tell dudes to get help the stigma of getting Behavioral health, mental health has got to go away. Um, there's a rhyme or reason. This isn't a disability. This is a. This is the aftermath of a long, eventful career. That's what. That's what's happening here. When you start falling off walls and start falling out of vehicles, and around concussion blasts all the time, and you know you have a bunch of parachute. Uh, landings and just all the different stuff that comes with the special operations career field your body is gonna have some wear and tear on it and so there's viable science on how to fix and heal and help and get you back to your old self that you want to be and so it's not brave to not ask for help it's brave to ask for help because the world needs you in the best state that you can be helping and serving and continuing and all those things. And that's what Andrew and Doc Gordon and the Warriors and Angel Foundation wants to do for you, wants to do for the world. Yeah, to all the donors out there, thank you. Um, these enlisted guys really need your help. I, I retired an officer, so I paid for my own protocol and proud to do that. But these enlisted guys, this, this protocol is not cheap. And the enlisted guys need some help with that. They're not retiring with a bunch of bucks, I can tell you that. 
And so you are serving an amazing populace, one that served you to allow you to go out and have the life that you can enjoy. But then two, they have viable, viable leadership problem solving that they can do for your company, for the world. Um, and honestly, you're required to help them with that. And so this is money well spent. This is, this is not a gimmick. This is no kidding science that is truly helping high quality A players become A players again. Any donation that goes to the Warrior Angels Foundation is guaranteed to go to a great place and to the proper place. It's going to go to these guys that are suffering. A lot of them are single, they're enlisted. Um, Joe, Joe and I pay for his out of pocket, but I know just from my own personal nutraceutical and hormone regimen, it, it can be quite expensive. And you know, they're serving us, they're serving their country, and it's our time to serve them. So I think it's, uh, I think it's an amazing way to show that you care. All right, well, Andrew, Doc Gordon, Everybody at Warrior Angels Foundation, we appreciate you guys more than we could say. And whatever support we can give, we're here to give it. So love you guys. And um, please support Warrior Angels Foundation. If you need help, please ask for help. It's, it's quality, quality science that's coming your way. All right. Everybody take care.